cares if it's finals and you haven't studied ardas kar tera pyo guru gobind singh paach aaya ardas kar ke study te lag tu always scared what's going to happen am i going to get into med school am i going to get a job what's going to happen why are you afraid you've been given baat shahi when the nawabi was given to baba shivek singh and he came back to the khalsa he said i got the nawabi i got the nawabi someone take it who are we going to give it to singhs were like sanu niya nawabi chahiye guru gobind singh ji ne paach chahiye de tiya Maharaj made us kings. Why should I take a why would I become a governor when I'm a king? What? Things nowadays are ready to kill each other over the presidency of a gurdwara. And back then they were like, I don't want this. Give me Pachai. And the Baba Shubhik Singh was like, please, I negotiated this. Can you just take can you just for once strategically think? And they were like, strategies are delicious. We are gods, right? <laughs> we are Maharaj, right? I want you to understand who you are so badly. Here's who you are. You've been given Nawabi. And I don't mean that spiritually. literally you are in one of the richest countries in the world with the most opportunities you have in front of you a platter to do whatever you want with your destiny say to maharaj have that connection with your guru love them say maharaj i'm struggling show me your path i can't figure it out you tell me how to do this ardas kar te tor ek raj tara sambhan vaste tanu ek soch di lod ya What is that soch? Oh soch kithonia. How do you institutionalize what you just said? You're you uh you have a major part of the answer. But when when Khal Saraj came, all of the Jatibandi were fighting each other. Maharaja Ranjit Singh comes from Lahore and he, as he's riding into Amritsar to take Amritsar as well, the Pangi missiles are standing right in front of him ready to fight him. Cuz Kartwar de Bose on the Pangi missiles sanal over de sege. Te Maharaja Ranjit Singh kende main sare nu ikatthe karna ya te ikatthe karna ya dande naal hathiyar de naal. And when they showed up they were ready to kill each other. What happens next? It took someone at a spiritual level to understand what was going on. He stepped up alone in the middle of the junk. He looked around and he goes, "Aaj sek sek nu fer vadn lagaya. Six are about to kill each other again. Meri beinti hai. Come off of your horses and give Ranjit Singh the rash." That's what he said to to the pungi missiles. At the end, it wasn't shastras that gave us the rash. At the end, it was Sant Birti. It was such a, a a. Why did the Pungi missiles even listen to Akali Baba Phule Singh? Nowadays, let me pose another question, right? We're, to the uh, location that we're we're hopefully going to arrive at. We can't stand behind any leader because we don't trust anyone. The Pungi missiles trusted and respected Akali Baba Phule Singh to such a level that they said, "Je tu si ke nea the raj vi sada ho de chadna cha koi gal nahi." Onu de do. Do we have that nowadays? Uh, what do you guys think? What do you all think? Have you seen any sick in Nimrata go in front of another and go, "Nay, pai teri gal sahi hai." You're right. Let's follow what you're saying. It's not rhetorical. Do do we? I'd love to meet them. <laughs> I'd love to meet them. What can you do? Or do you want to? Uh, please feel free to say stuff like, "Dude, honestly, this thing is <laughs> like I jo hunda ya pantna de ki jao. I need to focus on my family. I need to focus on becoming a doctor. I need to focus on like making my parents proud." Feel free to say that. There's no point in these discussions if it's not personal, and you have to be okay with saying your personal opinion because genuinely, no opinion is wrong. The punt is on a spectrum, and that spectrum has to exist. Is if if everybody wanted to be a shahid, then there would be no punt because everyone would. be going out and and big sheep but if there was no shaheeds and there would be no bump because there would be no blood to fertilize the soil in which you all are born from right so tell me where what is your opinion what can you do ke e apne to bahar ya we need to focus on you know the jathedar should handle this not us yeah our history is really rich um and i think that the longer time you spend in our history you find that uh, there actually is not a lot of wrong answers um like here's what i want you to understand for your own personal lives Guru Gobind Singh ji's bunt is so diverse that you will have surbe that are out on the battleground taking heads off of you know like mogul forces and then they'll come in and Guru Gobind Singh ji will be like char di gala like you did a great job and then you'll have someone out there like Bai Kanaiya ji that is feeding water to the opposition and then comes to Guru Gobind Singh ji and Guru Gobind Singh ji goes go take this malam as well take this medicine and fix them as well then you'll have someone that's like maharaj i didn't even know that there was a war going on i've been sitting on pagdi in my own anand <laughs> and maharaj is like koi na pagda lagara 
Nam Japi Chan. And I think what hurts my heart is we've, because we grew up here, right? So like to give you some perspective on, on who we are, you have a very rich history, but you don't know who you are yet, right? And I'm not talking to you as individuals, even, even myself. Because when we left Punjab and we resettled here, we lost a lot of our cultural norms that you pick up just growing up in the bend, that you pick up just being around Harmandar Saab and Gyanis and, you know, all of these things that are like, um, Kind of like how we all grew up with the perception that God is up there with a big stick in his hand. That's all preconceived notions that we build because we grew up in the West, right? There's an example that we were talking about, even our perception of history. In your textbooks, as you, you grew up here, you saw um, MLK and all these guys, their pictures were in black and white, even though colored cameras were available then, to make you feel like that history is long ago. Kal Saraj seems in our minds so long ago that you kind of think like, yeah, Osama Siga, that time was here, but it's not here anymore. And we need to look forward. But I'm going to tell you how ripe it is. Raise your hand if you know someone that was a part of the 1947 partition. As far as the 1947 partition is from right now, that's how far Khal Saraj was from 47 partition. That means the people that you know in partition knew people in Khal Saraj. That's how recent your history is. What happened is, the British came in, we were the last Raj to fall. As we were the last Raj to fall, we only spent, I think like 50 years or something like that under the British, and then they left. And then when 47 came, we were given nothing. And then the Sangar started, all of these things started happening. 84 happens, which is also very recent. And now we're here present day. Your struggle is a page in a history book. Think about it in reference to that. 174 years, I think. 170 something. Saloya, since you lost your badge. That in a history book, like in perspective, is like a paragraph. That's how recent it is. That those are your roots. But the thing is like, how, how you both just expressed, thank you. Sitting out here, it's hard to feel that because you have your struggles here. You have your, uh, you know, the struggles at home, your mental health issues, you have what you're going to do for your family, all of those things. Am I right? I mean, does someone want to share like, you know, these things are lofty because I have to focus on my grades. I can't be sitting at protests and I can't be, you know, thinking about these things because I, I need to pass. My parents worked too hard to get here. I think that's a, that's a lot of the narrative that I feel that I hear. So it's fair to assess that everyone here wants to learn more about what your sick roots are, right? Um, I think that you all are in the right space to do that. Uh, there's resources out there that will help you do that. Um, even when you're walking to class, listening to Basics is a Key, some podcasts, things like that will give you a really good idea of history as well. Um, what I had in mind actually was I wanted to share some Bani with you guys where Guru Gobind Singh Ji defines uh, what a Khalsa is. Actually, Pai Nandalalji. Um, Pai Nandalalji was a Sikh during the time of Guru Gobind Singh Ji, um, who was in the Darbar and all of that. So he, he lives and breathes everything Guru Gobind Singh Ji. And he writes exactly what a Khalsa is. He was like the poet laureate. In Guru Gobind Singh Ji's Darbar, he was like out of all the poets, fifty-two poets that matter, keep on rotation with them. He was the head of that. These words, right, that you're going to hear, really defines for you uh, what Khalsa is. Um, and before we actually got there, I wanted to tell you some sakis from uh, Khalsa Raj and how six carried themselves versus how we carry ourselves now. And no, it's not your like usual like don't bow in front of anyone and, you know, be a king and you're all kings and queens. You'll actually find it's quite the opposite. Sikhi is so far rooted in, in Nimrata. Nimrata means humility that we've lost that today. And we've lost it to such a point that we look at liberalism and we go, that's Sikhi. Then we look at conservatives saying, carry a gun. And we go, that's Sikhi. And we have started to define Guru Granth Sahib Ji with Western ideologies. I don't want to say Western, with Kalyugi ideologies over finding the definition from Guru Sahib and his poets and just learning straight how did they carry themselves? How did they behave? How can I take that into my life? Right. So another thing you have to realize is some resources that I feel individuals have started to muck and say are not yours. OK, I know it's going to sound like we're on a tangent from Sikh sovereignty, but I mean, I know there's a lot of Sikhs out there. There's a lot of Sikhs out there that are doing amazing work. But I'm saying as an individual, you have to ask yourself, do I deserve Raj? And if I don't, 
How do I come to deserve it? And if I feel I don't, what changed? Because every Sikh was born with that. In the entire world, if there's only one Sikh that remains alive in the entire world, even then that Sikh will say, we deserve Raj. And if you ever come to a point where you say we don't deserve it, what changed? So I want to I just go over some quick history, just so you know. We had in all of our takhts, uh, two Granths were Prakash, Guru Granth Sahib Maharaj and Shri Dasam Granth Maharaj. The difference was Guru Granth Sahib Maharaj was always Prakash a tad higher than Dasam Granth Maharaj, okay? One was our spiritual uh, strength. One was our military strength. There's a report. There's so much British history because it's very recent. You think it's really old, but it's very recent. Archives, digital, it's all very recent. So if you want to see history, you have to visit these places. There's there's documents that you can find in India and England that show how they took our Shastras, that show how it is that we were targeted uh, from, from our culture. Um, the harmonium that we use for Kirtan, even that is French. It's not actually ours. Our instrument, are the Dilruba, the Taos. The, they're all stringed instruments, the Rabab. All of these instruments are instruments that we grew up on as a Pant. And the difference was that a stringed instrument is a Ladi. Ladi is something that's unbroken. Uh, French harmonium is a sort of Padshad. It's all broken. So what does that mean? When you're doing kirtan on a French harmonium, I, I don't really uh, have a singing voice, but I want to give you an example. On a French harmonium, it's sa re ga ma pa, and so you can feel the, you know, the differences, and you can even hear it when people are singing. On a stringed instrument, it's sa re ga ma pa da ni sa sa ni pa da ma ga re sa ah. It's all like one flow. And when a Dilruba would play, Dilruba was an instrument made by Guru Gobind Singh Ji. The, the definition is heart snatcher. Dilruba, one that steals your heart. And the way it's made, when you say your voice into it and you're not even playing, it echoes back to you. I wish I would have brought a Dilruba with me so I could show you. And the British noticed. Then what else did they see? They saw that their military grant, the Dasam grant, is so powerful, it gives them military strategy. It gives them taqat. And they said, as long as they have that, their martial spirit cannot be broken. Someone writes a book to Sanjana Singh Ji. And in that book, they write all the reasons why Dasam grant is not a part of the Sikh Panth. Sanjana Singh Ji takes that book and they flip to the last page. And you know what they write? Sur Bir Yodhyanda grant Bujdil Kair the the grunt that is written for surme for warriors a coward will never understand it you know some people say oh there's mentions of hindu devi devte in there you know like chandi that has nothing to do with us <laughs> read between the lines homie chandi is riding a lion to go and kill dance do you know how you say lion from where we come any guesses? Sing. Chandi is the Shakti, the power of a sword. Can anyone tell me where Chandi Divad is happening in front of them? Chandi is riding a Singh right now, in every moment. And if a Dant comes in front of us, it is our duty to take them out. Do you, do you see the power in reading between the lines? But instead we want to go, no, 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 no. This has nothing to do with us because this is a different religion. And we've started to break ourselves apart. And that's what they wanted. There's a parliament speech on this where he talks about Kirtan, he talks about Dasam Granth. He talks about, oh, education. Talks about these three things and he goes, in their kingdom, they give way too much importance to these three things. We have to take them away. You know how they took education away? Illiteracy rates were at an all time low during the Raj. The reason is anytime someone wanted to build a mandir, a mosque or a gurdwara, there was a school built right next to it. Every house had a kada, had. Uh, kada is a, um, how you learn how to read. And when the British took over, they offered do anne. They started offering money for kade. They would say, come, give us your kade and we'll burn it away. Isn't that crazy? They started burning your kade. They took dasam granth out of your gordware and then they took away your kirtan and they gave you the French harmonium. What else did they do? They lined everybody up and said, throw away your 10 foot karpanna. Throw these away. You don't need them. And Singhs lined up and started throwing them in a pile. There's a um, Singh. His name is Baba Tega Singh. He's in line to throw away his Shastar. And as he gets to the front, he starts to cry. He says, Ki Maharaj, why has this day come on us? Why are we having to throw away who we are? 
Like Singh was saying earlier, We are nothing without Shastras. And that's exactly what Maharaj says. They go, These Shastras, they're not just, you know, a bullet cannot cut a bullet without a bullet. You know, all, all of these examples you gave things up. Love them. Our Guru says, These are your leaders. They're your Gurus. They're your God. They're your Peer. That's how much importance they've given Shastras. They say, they, Guru Gobind Singh Ji's words, without a Shastra and without Kes, no a man to be a sheep. That's Guru Gobind Singh Ji. That, that has to hurt as Baba Tega Singh is standing there knowing that he's about to accept being a sheep. So as the Singhs are dropping their Shastras into this big pile, as he's about to drop it, he sees a horse that's unmanned. He sprints for the horse. He gets on the horse and he takes off with his Shastra. The British soldiers go to the Nepali soldiers. They go, go grab him. And they get on top of the horses and they start running over towards them. And they run and they run and they run. And there's five of them. And then there's one of Baba Tega Singh. They catch him. He turns around and he goes, look. He goes, nahi tusi go raya, nahi main go raya. Je apa lad pe, tusi bhi ohi marna, main bhi ohi marna. Par main ek gala kaya dinna. Je main marna hoya na, te panja de ser jarur vaddu. He goes, I can promise you one thing. You're brown and I'm brown. Anyone that dies here is from the same nation, brother. But when I die, I'm taking five with me. So you go home, let me run away. Just tell them you couldn't catch me. They look at each other and they're like, well, you know what? He's kind of right. <laughs> I got to get home to my wife and kids, right? So they ride back. Baba Tegasin continues. He goes into the deserts of uh, all the way towards Afghanistan and he ends up fainting. Some dakus find him, they take him back and there he he meets someone that he knew that he served under. And he cries to him and says, you won't believe what's happened. All of this is documented in a book, a book that was uh, actually when I started reading it, I realized it's dated closer to Kal Saraj than it is to today. It was like 1912, something like that, when it was like written. And Baba Tega Singh Ji sits down with the author and starts telling him what it was like to be a soldier of Baba Sham Singh Atari. Sham Singh Atari was one of the greatest generals under Maharaja Ranjit Singh. So Baba Tega Singh starts to tell his story and he says how I joined Baba Sham Singh Atari's forge. And I want to tell you a few sakhiya about Baba Sham Singh Atari and we've brought their kirpan with us today as well to show you tangibly that your history is right in front of you. But first I want you to know who they were, how they carried themselves and how you and I should carry ourselves. So Baba Tega Singh goes, I was a surma inside of my own Bend. I used to just go and mess around with everyone. And my dad says to me one day, He goes, go and join the Sikh military. So he goes and he goes and he finds Baba Sham Singh Atari's forge. And he says to them, he goes, I want to be a horse rider in Sham Singh Atari's forge. They go, okay, go talk to that man on a horse over there. That's Gulab Singh. He will uh, tell you how to do it. He's the right hand man of Sham Singh Atari. So he goes up to Baba Gulab Singh and he says, Baba Ji, I want to join Sham Singh Atari's Fodja as a Kaur Savar. And he's in a bit of a mood. And he looks down at him and he goes, uh, I don't know if you guys know, there's there's main areas in Punjab, Malwa, Majja, Dwaba. Anyone not know? Raise your hand. Okay. So um, there's different areas. That's all that we, re just regions. Uh, there's not much else to it. But each region has a stereotype against the other one that they're from that region. And even in Punjabi songs, you'll hear like, oh, Dwaba is the best, or Majja is the best, or Malwa is the best. So Majja is like the Amritsar area, Malwa is like the Ludhiana area, and Dwaba is like the, the Jalandhar Hasharpur area. Um, and so they're in Majja right now when this is happening. And um, Baba Tega Singh is from Malwa. And he goes up to Galab Singh and he says, I want to join as a course of heart. And he looks down at him and he goes, Ja Malwaya. What do you know? You're an, you're an illiterate. Go and work with the donkeys. And Baba Tega Singh was 19 at the time. So, you know, as you guys all know, you feel like you're going to take the world by storm. <laughs> Um, so Baba Tega Singh Ji looks up at Baba Gulab Singh and he says, he says, uh, Minu e pata saga ki sardar ne afsar rakhya. Minu e ni si pata ki onne majelli kutte bhi rakhya ponkan vaste. He says, I knew that Sham Singh Atari had military officers, but I didn't know he had dogs that were barking orders. Gulab Singh gets angry and he looks down at him and he goes, what did you just say to me? 
<laughs> right? J I'm telling you, just so you're not always like, oh, Pratan Singh's always talked like Hanji Hanji. No, <laughs> they they also had a little bit of uh, sikhi work to do, right? We all do. I'm letting you know that you're not impure. You're not. This is how we've always been. Right? So he goes, Aja doi hati hunne. I goes, let's go. Let's throw hands. Baba Tega Singh thinks in his mind, he goes, oh dear, uh, I don't have a good kirpan on me, but yeah, fine. He goes, Aja pe. Baba Gulab Singh pulls out two kirpans and goes, pick one. Baba Tega Singh goes, I pick this one, I take it. They take it, right? They both start fighting each other. And as they're fighting each other, they're starting to, Baba Tega Singh is like, uh-oh, mouse taaf na panga le le Like, this guy's pretty good. And Baba Gulab Singh is like, Tega Singh wa jaan badiya. Like, he's pretty strong. And Baba Tega Singh is 19. He's taking cuts. Takes a cut to the shati, takes a cut on the arm, but he's still fighting. And he trips and falls over a rock. And Baba Gulab Singh says, Sambal ja. Or take care of yourself, get up. But he says it in a taunting way. So then uh, Baba Tega Singh gets mad and he starts fighting back. And then Baba Gulab Singh's foot gets stuck in mud and he falls over. And when he falls over, Tega Singh goes, Sambal apne apnu Right? He also says, it, oh, take care of yourself, get up. And uh, then a couple of Singhs see, they go and tell Baba Sham Singh Atari, Baba Sham Singh Atari, go, go and arrest them. And they're like, Sham Singh Atari, but they see the Singhs running over, they're like, uh-oh, we've been caught. And they put their kirpans away, they're like, oh, we weren't, we, we're, mm. we were just talking. We weren't doing anything else, right? And they're like, maybe, Aja, Sham Singh Atari, no pata lag kya so they go in front of Baba Sham Singh Atari and Baba Ji sits there and he looks at them and he says to Baba Tega Singh, he goes, is all you know war? Do you not have an ounce of humility? Do you think all it takes to be a Khalsa is to know how to fight? Do you not know what respect of elders is? And then he goes, Tuta Jawa kya? He looks at Gulab Singh. Gulab Singh, you're my right hand man. Baba Hari Singh Nalwa has given Shahidi. Akali Baba Fula Singh Ji has given Shahidi. Maharaja Ranjit Singh has the Dogre. Dogre were the ones that go to betray Maharaja Ranjit Singh. Around him and he won't allow me into his darbar. He's keeping us outside. The Dogre have infiltrated the darbar. The few of us that are left that are trying to figure this thing out and you're going to go and do this? He goes, do you know that there is no difference between you and the Mughals? He goes, the same nasha of power that the Mughals had, you have. You think just because you're an officer on a horse, you can boss people around? You can tell people around what to do? You can talk so disrespectfully? That's what the Mughals did. And Akal Purk sent down Fojan to end them. And because of this hankar, we will also be ended. This is the same hankar that will end us. That's what Baba Shalab Singh Atadi says verbatim to Galab Singh. Then he says, What are you so prideful of? Are you prideful of this Raj? This Raj isn't even yours. It's not even mine. It's not even Maharaj Ranjit Singh's. It's Guru Gobind Singh Pacha's. He goes, do you know when Maharaj Ranjit Singh did Fateh over Multan, he got a small bit of ego inside of him. And when, Gadvei is the helper of the Maharaj. He goes, he was in a room alone with the Maharaja and he saw Maharaja Ranjit Singh alone in his room. Maharaja Ranjit Singh grabs his dardi and he yanks it down himself and he goes, Karnia. Karna means a person that has one eye. Tinu kava hankarya. What are you feeling even an ounce of ego over? Jeda dushmanya odi vi do bama teriyam vi do bama. Odiyam vi do latan teriyam vi do latan. Odiyam do akhan teriyam ekya. They even have more eyes than you. You only have one. What are you so prideful of? Can they even Guru Gobind Singh ji paacha? Can they ki in hinki kirpa ke saje ham hai? That with the kirpa of the Khalsa, the kirpa of six, I am where I am today. And then he slaps himself. Maharaj Ranjit Singh slaps himself three times and he pulls his beard down again. And he says, Karnaya, sambal ja, Guru Saab de charnach deg. He's saying this to himself. On the outside, he has to be a Raja and on the inside, he's showing this humility. I can't name you one leader today that has the nimrata to do something like that. Then Baba Sham Singh Atari says, the Maharaja does that and you have so much ego that you sit on a horse and you spit down at our own six. He goes, Minu das, teri kedi kodi khodvech fasi sigi jeda tenu khanda kadna peha. He goes, tell me, what situation were you stuck in that you had to pull a khanda out to resolve it against a fellow sick? He goes, today, Guru Gobind Singh Paul Acha says, ki e apne peerya, that these shastras are, are our peer, that in their guidance we go. Sing to your point again about weapons, there are peer, they will tell us what to do, we will not tell them what to do.
He says, today, tu ena da peer ban gaya. You have decided to make yourself the God of these Shastras. You used this Shastra for your purpose today, not for the Guru's purpose. And that makes you a Dokhi of this Panth. When he hears all of this, man, even me saying all of this, I, I feel like Nimi Pornli Ji ka raya. Baba Sham Singh Atari he gal kende horn. And so he falls at the feet of Sham Singh Atari and he says, forgive us, forgive me. He goes, he takes a step back. He goes, I am no one to give you forgiveness. The Sangat has to forgive you. He goes, you apologize to him first. Before Baba Gulab Singh can apologize to Tegga Singh. And remember, if this was today, if it was a 19 year old today, they'd be like, yeah, I'd better apologize. But you know what Baba Tegga Singh does? He falls at the feet of Gulab Singh first. And he says, forgive me first. And Baba Gulab Singh, he says, no, forgive me. And they both genuinely ask for forgiveness. And then Baba Sham Singh Atari goes, you both have to go and ask for forgiveness in the Sangat. And then he says, Gulab Singh, tu vadaya teri jadi galti ya etan yana ya inu apa sa khalavange. He goes, Gulab Singh, you have to do Pandyandi Seva, you have to do Jordyandi Seva, you have to do Ardas, and you have to announce in front of the entire Sangat what you did wrong. He goes, Satvach, now go and do that. Look at, the, look at how much love and guidance is given towards Guru Saab. Look at the mat that's given. You know, look at, really feel how uh, problem solving is happening between this Khalsa. Sham Singh Atari says to them, he goes, uh, as punishment, <laughs> he goes, Gulab Singh, you're going to be Tega Singh's Ustad. So Gulab Singh has to be the one that teaches Tega Singh how to do, how to use a Shastar, how to ride a horse, all of that. And because of that, they came together. And remember I told you Baba Tega Singh ran away from the British? The person that ends up finding him in that cave, dried up and close to death is Baba Gulab Singh. And he's telling Gulab Singh, Ustad Ji, you won't, you won't even realize what's happened back there. That was their story. That's how they got together, right? And, and what does that Raj look like? Where this level of Nimrata is used to like explain to each other. <clears throat> In a village, there was a murder case, okay? Um, a, a, a guy ends up teasing someone else's wife verbally. And the wife tells her husband, the husband says there should be a panchat. You know, there should be a panchat that sits down and decides what's wrong. As he's calling for a panchat, word gets around and Nur Shah, the person that was teasing, ends up getting a bad rep around the village. He tells his brother, Ahmed Shah, he goes, bro, these guys are messing up my rep. We got to go teach them a lesson. So they both rock up to this BB's house and they beat the husband to death. And then they get out of there. But Basham Singh Atari comes and he finds out that all of this has happened. The BB tells him this is what happened. And he goes, don't worry, let me find out from every, let me get everyone to admit the truth. He comes out into the pend and he goes to the pendwale. He goes, tell me what is the truth? The pendwale goes, oh, we didn't see anything. And verbatim, Baba Sham Singh Atari Kende points at the body and goes, who did this? Everybody just got quiet. And he goes, you have until the end of the day tomorrow or else I will have you all be guilty. You'll all be punished. At night when everybody got together, during the day, Baba Sham Singh Atari then did the final rites. They did the uh, Antam Sanskar for the body. They took care of everything. They gave money to the widow to, to make Langar and Pani for her children. Because they were really poor. Um, and at night, Baba Tega Singh started hanging out with the villagers because he knew everybody. Uh, and as they were sitting down, he took a parontha with some um, shakar. And he was like, Baba Pua, tu bhi khala, right? And he sat down with someone and he gave him parontha with shakar. And then he was like, Das yaar, menu ki hoya? Magda ke sinu dasana. And uh, the Bapu goes, Pota te nu das dena ga na das and he's like das de minu koi gal nahi. And so he starts telling him, right? And he goes, Hoya idda ki Noor Shah ne Ahmed Shah nu liya te o kare ja ke sachi kutte ho nu. Par Noor Shah ne Ahmed Shah nu rokne di koshish ki thi. Noor Shah tried to stop Ahmed Shah, but Ahmed Shah was so angry he busted open the guy's head. He was like, okay, thik hai. He goes and he tells Baba Sham Singh Atari. Baba Sham Singh Atari in the morning goes, Pendavade ho gala son lo. And he says to Noor Shah and Ahmed Shah, Sachi minu pada lag gya ya. I know what the truth is. If you confess, your saja will be less. If you do not, then you will know the wrath of the Khalsa. And so Nur Shah and Ahmed Shah step up and they go, you know, ki, yeah, we went over there and yeah, we got into a fight, but it was her husband that started cussing at us first and he is the one that hit us first. I blocked it and then we beat him. So they lied. Bibi Fatoji gets up and she goes, this is not what happened. They're lying. They're lying. This is not what happened. Then their father ends up coming. Ahmed Shah and Nur Shah. And Baba Sham Singh Atari says to their father, he says, listen, let's go to the mosque. There we will boil oil. Tell the truth in front of Allah and put your hand inside of the oil. If your hand doesn't burn, then you were telling the truth. The father gets scared. He goes, yeah, listen, uh, my son killed him. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'll just be honest. 
And he goes, okay, fine. So he looks at Bibi uh, B- Fatoji and he says, listen, the punishment is in your hand. He goes, what I think the punishment should be is that Ahmed Shah should be cut into pieces and thrown to the side for what he's done, for these crimes that they have committed. But it's in your hand. He goes, however, remember one thing, the way that you are widowed and your children have no father, Ahmed Shah's children will be fatherless and his wife will be widowed. So you have to see what the justice is there. In that time, Fatima, who is the wife of Ahmed Shah, finds out what's going on. She shows up with her kids and starts crying. Maybe Fatoji starts crying because she's like, I don't want to do this. So now they're both crying, crying. So then Baba um, uh, Sham Singh Tariji tells uh, more like village women to come and try to like, you know, settle them down. But it's such a conundrum that they start crying. And then Baba Sham Singh Atari starts tearing up. And he's like, and he looks at Ahmed Shah and he goes, look at what your mistake has done. He goes, what justice can I serve? Do I widow your wife? He goes, people like you should be tied to the, the end of horses and dragged through town and fed to dogs. That's what should happen. Ahmed Shah is sitting there and he's falling at his feet. He's going, please, like, just show me a way out. Fatima starts doing the same thing. Bibi Fatoji goes, I forgive them. It's okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> then Baba Sham Singh Atari looks at Bibi Fatoji and goes, forgiveness is not in your hands to give. I told you to pick a punishment. You can't give forgiveness. He goes, I'll tell you what, I'll give you an out. Get, put a price on Ahmed Shah's head and I will pay you that price. Ahmed Shah will belong to me. His punishment will belong to me and whatever I do, I will take care of. She goes, fine. He goes, give me a kimat. She goes, pan so He goes, done. Pan so back then was a lot. What he ends up doing is he buys 500 rupees worth of land for her so that her kids can grow up and they have a sustainable business and all of that. He gave a sustainable solution. Then he takes Ahmed Shah and the Sajah he gives Ahmed Shah is immediately he ties him to a tree and they give him V Kore, so 20 lashes and they, with barbed wires in the back and a whip and they rip his flesh, 20, 20 whips immediately. Nur Shah, same thing, 20 whips. After 20 whips on Nur Shah, he says, Nur Shah, your punishment is done. Your intent was not to kill. Your mistake was grave in that you tried to speak towards another's wife in the way that you did. You can go now. Ahmed Shah, for one month every day, you will be whipped 20 lashes uh, up until the point he can take it. If he can't take it and it looks like he's going to die, stop. At the end of one month, you will be freed. So 20, uh, 30 days, he was lashed with 20 whips each day. At the last day, Babaji tells him, your punishment from now on is every day you must go to the masjid and ask for forgiveness in front of Allah for what you have done. And you must raise your kids to be more righteous than you were. What ends up happening when Babaji leaves like that is Ahmed Shah and Nur Shah start to work on the fields of Bibi Fatoji for free. Because obviously BBG is not going to work, pull a hal on the fields. They do it for free so that the two kids can be raised. They start going to the masjid every day. They, they become a very religious and righteous family. They then go to meet Sham Singh Atari. Sham Singh Atari finds out this is happening and he smiles and he gifts them panj rupees and kapde. Then he keeps them with him for a month, teaching them what it's like to love God, teaching them how to be better people. Could you imagine giving that sentence today? The Khalsa today or the six today would say, off with his head, cancel him, take his head off, nothing less than that. Because we think with anger now. We don't think with Sahaj Avastha. Look at what he did. I really thought about it and reflected and said, if we were in America, or England, or Canada, or anywhere, the punishment would have been 15 to 20 years. The kids still would have grew up without a father figure. Hate would have increased. The children would have ended up on the streets doing things like daku, dakat, all of these things that we see are raising criminal rates today. Imagine serving justice in a way where justice is served, and the fear of God is in them, and they've become a righteous family. And those kids are growing up at the charan of Akal Purk, in the form of Allah. I can't pick you a single Sikh that would that would give that justice today. Look at the sojourney of those six and think in your mind, how can I act forgiving but still move in justice? So Papa Tegha Singh says to General Sham Singh Atari, he goes, will the Maharaja not be mad at you for not punishing someone with death? Sham Singh Atari laughs and he goes, Maharaja Ranjit Singh always tries his best 
to avoid the death penalty at all costs. Didn't see that coming, did we? Guru di beyad bhi hove. That's a different thing. Sir, la dena chahiye ho. There is no other answer. Guru nu koi mare. Guru nu koi that type of beyad bhi. Ang paade. That type of stuff, right? Jin jada jaan ke hai kare. Guru Gobind Singh ji nu jado aaye, oh Mughal mare gaya si. Guru Arjun Dev ji nu jena ne shahid kita, oh mare gaya si. Guru Teg Bahadur ji nu jena shahid kita, oh mare gaya si. That's been the response. Other than that, Maharaj Ranjit Singh has always tried to find an option of forgiveness, and he goes, "Let me tell you about a time when Dakus." Would go. There was a daku named Man Singh. He would go into villages every night, and what he would do is take over the entire shahr, take his entire army, and then go into the richest houses and take all the riches and bounce. And he was making it very unsafe to live inside of the raj of Maharaja Ranjit Singh. Now here's the thing: you're the raja of a bunch of Singhs. Singhs are buggy. Singhs are fighters. Imagine the headache that comes with being the raja of a bunch of fighters and buggies. So he's sitting there going. Oh. So you're telling me that these guys are running around and they're just acting like pachas and taking people's kajanne. So then he goes and he goes, you know what? Put an anam out. Put it. Put a reward out. Whoever captures Man Singh alive will be gifted two villages. Man Singh, when he finds this news out, right? He goes. And he writes a letter, and it says, and he posts it on the darbar of Maharaja Ranjit Singh at night. He sneaks around and he posts it. What does the post say? Whoever captures Man Singh alive will be gifted Lahore from Man Singh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Baba Maharaj Ranjit Singh looks at this and goes, "What surma is running around and saying that I will gift you Lahore?" And so Maharaj Ranjit Singh says to his spies, he grabs a handful of them and he goes, "I'm gonna deal with this one on my own." Listen, there's no political advantage for a king to go and deal with a situation like this on his own. He takes a small unit, a small company, and he rides out to where Man Singh is. And Man Singh goes, "Stop! Get off of your horses where you are." And what Maharaj Ranjit Singh says, "More." Is more tinia ni kriya churiya pa ki asvi land liya hai. That's exactly what's written. And then he goes, "Tu keda surma jada main na idam bolda." And he goes, "Tu keda surma jada mainu kya main kore to lithan vaste." Maharaj Ranjit Singh is trying to get Man Singh off of his horse and fight him one on one. So he's challenging him. So Maharaj Ranjit Singh goes, "Anyone with a big army can say, 'Get off of your horses.'" Tinu tere sena da man ya tere to aap koi jor hai niga. Man Singh goes, "Who the what?" He goes. Who are you to say that to me? He goes. Aja pe doing hathi hunne. Me and you. He doesn't know he's the Maharaja. He's not dressed as the Maharaja. He goes. Come, let's fight. And he goes. Maharaja and Jee Singh goes. All right, fine. Me and you, one on one. Winner takes all. Let's do it. And they both get off of their horses. He still doesn't know it's Maharaj Ranjit Singh. They start fighting each other. Maharaj Ranjit Singh's fighting style is very calm. A lot of defensive maneuvers. Six hours, do pero lad de re until Man Singh's. He started getting just winded, and then Maharaj Ranjit Singh did a var that not a lot of people knew, and that was how to to answer a var in such a way where you can drop the other person's kripan out of their hand. When he did that var, their kripan flew, and Maharaj Ranjit Singh threw his kripan to the side, and he tackled Man Singh. He tackled him. He got him in a hold, and he sat down on his chest. He pinned his arms down, and he goes, "Get down, fe Lord, that Raj there, I'm in no ganey." Man Singh starts laughing. Ovi Surma, he knows he's been bested, and he goes, "Yeah, but," and he still doesn't know it's Maharaj Ranjit Singh. He says, "Ha." Huh. But apanuna dona nu kathyanu sena. We have to put our armies together, and we have to rock up to Lahore together. We're doing it in the middle of the night. That's how I'm going to give you Lahore. Maharaj Ranjit Singh goes. चाल फे सूर में आप इदा ही कर दे आ जा लेट्स गो डू एनी पुट्स आर्म अराउंड हिम एंड ही गोस आ जा अपन लाहौर जत दे महाराज रणजीत सिंह इज सेइंग दिस टू मान सिंह एंड मान सिंह इज लाइक चाल फे आ जा अपन चलते हैं एंड दे बोथ गेट टुगेदर एंड दे स्टार्ट मूविंग टुवर्ड्स लाहौर एंड व्हेन दे गेट्स टू लाहौर एट दिस पॉइंट इट्स अबाउट 6 एएम 7 एएम राइट द सन इज स्टार्टिंग टू राइज अ लिटिल एंड अ पेरेदार आउटसाइड सीज एंड ही गोस स्टॉप हु इज इट एंड महाराज रणजीत सिंह लुक्स एट वन ऑफ हिज स्पाइज एंड उन्हें इशारा कर दा गो शट हिम अप एंड ही गोस ही विस्पर्स समथिंग इन द पेरेदार्स ईयर इन द पेरेदार runs off man singh goes aaj jathedar ne na kuch na kuch khed khedi huni hai jehde pehredar pe bhaj raha hai so he says to maharaj ranjit singh he goes uh, badi kala tere ko hai oh you have so many skills ha huh? and he goes halle ta ek kala tu dekhiya ga wala dekhi tu he goes you've only seen one trick watch my next trick man singh's like theek hai 
So the spy that had run off goes inside and tells everyone Maharaja Ranjit Singh has, has arrived. The fort's doors open up. The palace's doors open up. Lines of military spies with guns in their hand line up. Rifles in arm bowing to Maharaja Ranjit Singh as he's walking in. And Man Singh is awestruck. And he's like, uh... And he looks over at Maharaj Ranjit Singh and realizes that he's been standing next to Maharaj Ranjit Singh. And then Maharaj Ranjit Singh looks at Man Singh and says, Kidna ve Lahore mera ho gaya ki nahi? <laughs> and he puts his hand on Man Singh and he says, Tera bhi bachan sacha reh gaya ki tu minu Lahore dena. Mera bhi bachan sacha reh gaya ki mein tenu jinda pakarna. He goes, what you said is also the truth now that I have been gifted Lahore. And what I said is also true that you now have been captured alive. Look at the patience required. He didn't give him any saja. You know what he did instead? He said, Tu surma bandaya. He put him parti in Sardar Hari Singh Nalua's army. And he told Hari Singh Nalua, Eh hey banda surmaya, train him. Imagine today, today I see six interact. And when they say, Oh, I'm working on this project or I'm working on that project, you know what ends up happening? Uh, a gun measuring competition. I do more in the bunt. Or they start ignoring each other. Or they start going, yeah, but we work on this project. Oh, yeah, yeah, but we've been working on this. Maharaja Ranjit Singh did not do that with Man Singh. They recognized what skill he had instead of punishing him and canceling him and thinking, he empowered him. Each, until the day, each one of us don't start looking inside and going, what is my strength and what can I give to the Panth? Define yourself. How can I give my Yogdan to this Panth? Is it my diswand? Is it my part? Is it not? What is it? And then in each other, if I meet you and you tell me you have a skill, instead of me going, yeah, but my skill is better, why don't I go, wow, I wonder what you can do with that skill. Then you're going to say, how can I support this leader? You were talking earlier about how Kal Saraj can happen. There are only two ways. One way is if Akal Prakh himself come down and just give us Raj. And we have our own place where we can sit and, and just live in peace. The second is recognize what it means to be a Raja. What does it mean to be a Raja? What does it mean to be a Khalsa? To be a Raja, I know this Gursik that lives in the area. He's 90 something years old. He's a military officer. He used to be a military officer in the Indian army. And he was telling me that one time he was driving in his like Chandayamari and Gadiya and he goes, he saw an officer taking Rishwat from Trakwari. And instead of yelling at him or whatever, he called him over to his door and he says, why are you bugging poor truck drivers? And he starts talking to him about Gurbani. He starts talking, he goes, lekha kithe parenga to? He brings him closer. He uses, you have to have Barney inside of you in order to change others. You have to experience Sikhi before you can tell someone what Sikhi is. After that day, he stopped taking Rishwit. And then he tells us, he goes, he used to come to my office very often because I even sent spies after and I tested him to see if he takes Rishwit. He goes, no, not at all. And we're out here like, oh, we'll give you a hundred bucks if you can memorize Japji Sahib. There's no prem in that. There's no like making you understand what's going on. We've lost the Kala that Maharaja Ranjit Singh had, that Sham Singh Atari had, that Hari Singh Nalua had. That's why we don't have a Raj. You don't know how to be a Raja today. Let me tell you something really crazy that I hope you're ready to have your mind blown. When Nawabi was given to the Khalsa, through Nawab Kapoor Singh, negotiated by Shubhaeg Singh. He negotiated with the Mughals. Today, if someone negotiates with, with anyone in India, you know what we're going to say? RSS da banda inu kutto maro. Why didn't they do that when Shubhaeg Singh uh, negotiated something with the Mughals? Why? Because we had akal. What did we do with that akal? He got the Nawab, Adi Nawabi. So they, they said, here's what the Mughals were thinking. They were thinking, you know what? If we give them Nawabi, they'll get rich. If they get rich, I don't know if you guys have any guesses. Any guesses what happens once you get rich? Come on, shout it out. Huh? Get you get lazy. They said we will give them money and other dead. What they're going to do? You have the reception to Daru Peen. You have the Maya to Parva. You have the Parda Niya to learn. And we will take them over. But you know what Nawab Kapoor Singh did? Nawab Kapoor Singh was... Ah, 
He was such a Sikh. He knew all the rags in Guru Granth Sahib Ji to do Kirtan. He, at the age of 20, he got bored with a bunch of Singhs and said, He took 10 Singhs with him. They went into Lahore when it wasn't their Raj, took over a Thana, a police station, sat down at the chief spot of the station and said, We are now the Raj of this Thana. And then in six hours, they did Raj like that. After six hours, when the Patans found out what was going on. They sent Foja and then they were like, all right, let's bounce. And then they all got together and they did Nagare and Jakare, got on their horses and said, Je de de vach, sanu pado. and then Otomarge. Why? Just to show we are fearless. That's who you are. Even in the face of oppression, you do not get into Tal Dikala. You stay Jar Dikala. You stay happy. Who cares if it's finals and you haven't studied? Ardaskar, Tera Pyo Guru Gobind Singh Pachaya. Ardaskar, Ke study te lagatu. Always scared, what's gonna happen? Am I gonna get into med school? Am I gonna get a job? What's gonna happen? Why are you afraid? You've been given Baat Shahi. When the Nawabi was given, <laughs> to Baba Shabek Singh and he came back to the Khalsa. He said, I got the Nawabi, I got the Nawabi. Someone, take it. Who are we going to give it to? Singhs were like, Sanunia Nawabi Chaidi, Guru Omen Singh Ji Ne Paat Chai Di Maharaj made us kings. Why should I take a Nawabi? Why would I become a governor when I'm a king? What? Singhs nowadays are ready to kill each other over the presidency of a Gurdwara. <laughs> And back then they were like, I don't want this Padshahi. Give me, I, I don't want this uh, Nawabi. Give me Padshahi. And the, Baba Shabek Singh was like, please, I negotiated this. Can you just take, can you just for once strategically think? And they were like, strategies are delikia. We are gods, right? <laughs> we are Maharaja, right? And so then they go, Nawab Kapoor Singh in Udavo, I padhya likhya ya, I kush karuga paanth vaaste. When he received Nawabi, you know what he did? Instead of getting fat and lazy, he said to the Sings, we're only going to have a handful of years of this Nawabi. Let's get our Kord Savar, let's get Shastas, let's get ourselves Tiar Pratiar. They made a Kord Savar forge so large that no one could mess with them. And here's the part where I, I want you to understand who you are so badly. Here's who you are. You've been given Nawabi. You have been given Nawabi today. And I don't mean that spiritually. Literally, you are in one of the richest countries in the world with the most opportunities. You have in front of you a platter to do whatever you want with your destiny. Say to Maharaj, have that connection with your Guru. Love them. Say, Maharaj, I'm struggling. Show me your path. I can't figure it out. You tell me how to do this. Whether it's a test or whether it's doing a, a fateh on a morcha, does not matter what it is. Ardaaskar, tittor. Why do you have Nawabi? Your parents came from a politically and economically oppressed Punjab. They put their lives to fall into a lot of um, victim mentality. Look, please don't take me the wrong way. Follow me on this thought. We have fallen into victim mentality. Oh, my parents, the way they raised me, you know, like they didn't do this for me. They didn't teach me Sikhi. They didn't do that. I get it. I know it's a lot of it. I, I had arguments with my parents over this kind of stuff. It's important. It's important to draw your boundaries. It's important to grow. That's how it goes. But understand that Guru Saab could not have planned it any better. Where are six today? Australia, England, Canada, America, the most Germany, Italy, the most successful nations in the entire world. There's a Gurdwara. There's multiple Gurdwara. There's you all sitting there. You have Nawabi. Are you going to do what the Turks wanted. Bro, nowadays, I see dudes taking over their parents' companies. I'd see people taking their uh, their opportunity that they have today and wasting it. How do they waste it? They're like, oh, bro, I'm just you know, I'm just trying to stun. I'm just trying to flex. No, I'm good. I, I want to build an empire. I want to build an empire with my family, my family's name. I want to make my dad proud. He's already proud. <laughs> Right? But what have you done for the Panth? Do you recognize that every generation before this one has done something for the Panth? Except this one. That's where we're sitting. And where you're sitting is you have Nawabi and you have Padshahi. You have your Guru. Bro, you know how hard it used to be to get Darshan of Guru Gobind Singh Ji? And now any Gurdwara you go to, you can see Guru Granth Sahib Ji. What a blessing. What a blessing. Do you know how hard it was after the Vadaka Lukara when there was only a handful of six left? And today, 
ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਗੋਦ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਪਾਤਸ਼ਾਹੀਆਂ ਨਵਾਬੀਆਂ ਐਂਡ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਸੇਇੰਗ ਸਖ ਪੰਥ ਦਾ ਕੀ ਬਣੂਗਾ ਅਸੀਂ ਕਿੱਥੇ ਰਹਿ ਗਏ ਆ ਵੀ ਯੂ ਟਾਕਿੰਗ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਡੂ ਯੂ نو ਵੇਅਰ ਦ ਰਿਚੈਸਟ ਪਰ ਕੈਪੀਟਲ ਮਾਈਨੋਰਿਟੀ ਇਨ ਅਮਰੀਕਾ ਇਫ ਵੀ ਵਾਂਟਡ ਟੂ ਮੇਕ ਅ ਪੁਆਇੰਟ we could make economies fall to their knees but there is no asas of that because there is no asas of who we are it's institutional guys this is the generation that has to inspire a sick renaissance and if you do not your grandchildren will blame you for being the lazy generation that is the onus and responsibility on our shoulders and trust me i know everyone has their struggles you're going through your challenges i am not saying those are small you have to overcome them while caring about the pont that's where the spectrum comes in what freedom do you have within your own circle define it you know what nah my family struggles i have to do me i got to take care of my family fer meri e binti hai tere charna de vich sikhi bare sakhna the swand de pont nu do the bare minimum raise six that's it and if you're like nah you know what i have I have the privilege I can do more than support existing systems identify problems that exist what are the problems that exist let me tell you something today if you say dodge you know the number actually let me start here the number one keyword that is banned on twitter is shaheed shaheed is the number one banned word you're not even allowed to say shaheed right after the jewish where the second highest in hate crime a community that takes hate crime upon themselves what have we done to step forward to take care of that every time we cry and we moan when someone goes and beats our bijogs but what have you done institutionally to take care of that nothing why cuz our soul is so small unfortunately i was saying the two types of way dodge will come is one if you recognize the pain inside of every family which isn't going to happen until kuch vadda nahi ho jata which maraj kripa karne doesn't or number 2 you recognize the bintis that we all as the bunt are putting at your feet as the next generation identify that there's a world beyond our ssas our gurdware our small community understand how the world works see how the geopolitical landscape looks like what i was saying in the beginning what is your foundation Do you have systems in place to make sure that sick billionaires are being formed? Do you have systems in place to make sure that sick billionaires can fund movements that are happening? Do you have think tanks? Do you have ways of supporting uh immigrants when they come? If you do a search of detention centers and put in the last name uh Sandhu Bans Delon uh Singh all of these, you will find lists and lists and lists of Punjabis in detention centers. And you're at an age where you can make change in that. But we want to put our funds towards Bangladesh nights in the name of raising funds. Bro, I've done the finances for it. It costs more to put on a Bangladesh night than it does when you make money. You're literally going in the negative by doing that. And you're a sick student association that has the opportunity to get these funds and I'm not trying to bash on all that. There's spaces for that. But what I'm trying to say is you are in the number 1 Anyone that says Berkeley's number 1 I ain't having it. Uh you are in the number 1 public institution in the United States, which is one of the most powerful countries in the world. You have the power to do something. Why would someone want to give you raj? The only way you deserve raj is if you live so justly and so intelligently now that everyone goes, "Ina de hath raj aaj ve na te meri jaan sokhi ho jave." What have you done in order to do that? These are the discussions that need to take place. You know, we say a lot of like, you know, it's important to have conversations around sick sovereignty because it keeps it alive. Mm, yes, but also, what does it mean for you to be sovereign? How are you going to build that base? What are those institutions? You have alliances that exist between SSAs that at one point before COVID had gotten so big that at any point you could grab the attention of anyone in this nation. I implore you to get back with those alliances. They exist in NorCal, they exist on this on the East Coast and yet for some reason it's not nationwide. Everyone needs to get together and do that. If that's what your goal is. Everyone needs to find within their power what can you do to contribute to the bunt and in not, in my opinion yes it's good to bash upon the systems that be because it implores them to be better but what have you done to support 
existing systems. Have you written a, a proposal to SGPC to say something like, hey, listen, I heard from my Jewish friends that they have a birthright program where Jewish students, it's their birthright to go to, to Israel and to look around and, and understand exactly what their culture and environment is. We need a program like that. Please work with us to build it. No, 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 no. Because it's easier to say the Jathadat is sold out. It's harder to sit down as a group and write a proposal. It's easier to talk ish than it is to get together and talk positivity. That's sad because that's not the panth that I know. The panth that I know has the power to learn and educate. And listen, don't ever feel down on yourself that you haven't learned enough about Sikhi, that you haven't, you know, that you're still learning and you don't know. And like, but it's, it's so overwhelming and there's so much to do. Just shift your mindset. Shift a mindset to bring Sikhi into your life. How can you bring Sikhi into your life? Start by five minutes of Nam Simran. That's it. Five minutes of Nam Simran. If you take one step towards Maharaj, they will take 10 million towards you. What is the worst that can happen? Let me tell you the worst case scenario of sitting down and doing Nam Simran for, for five minutes. Let's say you don't believe in God and you're like, I don't want to say Vaheguru. All right, there's a Harvard study that says if you do five to 10 minutes of meditation a day, the gray matter in your brain increases and it increases your performance in life. It decreases your anxiety and it increases your chances of thinking. The worst thing that can happen to you is you become a more balanced person. The best thing that can happen to you, God takes 10 million steps towards you, holds your hand and takes you to where you need to be. You feel the niggi god of Guru Gobind Singh Pacha as they hold you to their chest. You understand what it means to have the power of Shaheed Singh's Thapi on your back. You understand what it means to be Kalgitar Dapot. You understand what it means to be a queen. Actually, not just like, we're all kings and queens, but like... <laughs> How do you live your life in Padshahi? How do you live your life as a Raja? Bro, you could go to Skid Row today. When they see the start, they know they're going to get fed. That's crazy. More of that. We need more. More systems. So again, you are all very intelligent. Within the medical field, there's a lot of... Like my friends that are in med school, they're working on programs to make sure that six can work at bonds inside of hospitals. They're trying to figure out like medical language where... Right? Like, what do you, <laughs> what's your diagnosis of that, right? So no matter which field you're in, there is something for you to do that you can give to the bond, right? There's so much you can do in just seva. There's so much you can do in your own life. Right now, right, you might go, ah, oh, bro, between finals and midterms, time ni malda. Five minutes is nothing. Every time you have an SSA meeting, do it. I, I, I want to go over a couple Gurbani Dhyantakam because I want you all to know that this is what your guru overlooked. These are the words that were said in poems in your guru's darbar. Let me tell you about the Anandpur darbar, by the way. There was grunts in there that we don't agree with at all. That we look at and we're like, that's not Gurmat. But Guru Gobind Singh Ji had us learn them so that when we speak to someone, we can speak from their perspective. My buddy and I, we were walking down the street the other day and this Christian man, he says to us, he goes, uh, you know, can I speak to you? And we go, yeah. He goes, have you ever thought about uh, what's going to happen to you after death? And we were like, yeah, you know, <laughs> right? Like we say, um, but he goes, you know, like, what is your idea of God? What is God to you? All of this kind of stuff. And we start telling him, right? We, we have that dialogue with him because we've read enough about other religions and we respect them. He goes, you know, then how can it be that God is everywhere? And uh, we go, look, water is in the air, but you can't see it. But when it, be when it needs to become Pargat, it will become Pargat right in front of you. And he goes, what, what was Jesus to you then? Was he a prophet or not? And we go, listen, in the oneness that is the ocean, we are all waves. Jesus was also a wave that came and showed so many the path. Take that for, label that for what you may. You have to have this respect. Kihan Jesus is like Mahapurkasi, right? They, they were a Mahan Hasti. We meet a Christian, we tell them, hey, listen, read the Bible, follow Jesus. That, that's what we do. But then he goes, are you not afraid of going to hell? What if you're wrong? What if you end up in hell? What will you do then? And immediately in my mind, I was like, I knew what hell was before I got into Sikhi. When I started keeping my kiss, when I gave my head to Guru Sahib, and I knew that they were taking care of me. Then I knew what Swarg was. Guru Gobind Singh Ji. I go, look, a, a Gursik, right? I go, let me tell you an example of a Gursik. Forget me. 
A Gursik loves Gurusab so much that Gurusab is inside of their heart. I go, hell would be blessed to have a Gursik show up inside of it because hell would freeze over. Hell would say, thank you for bringing me Guru Gobind Singh Ji. Guru Gobind Singh Ji, when they were going to leave, Sikh said, we're going to miss your darshan. And Guru Gobind Singh Ji said, it's okay. When you see the Panj Singhs, see me. He goes, what if there's not Panj Singhs? He goes, you know, just look at one Singh. He goes, what if there's not even one Singh? He goes, just look at yourself in the mirror. He goes, what if there's not a mirror? It's me. Mere darshan ho Jadon Guru Sahib ne bachan kya, dek sekhnu asas hona chayda, ki maat hai hi nahi. E kes, e dastar jari tusi bani hai, kes jari ta adeko, o bhi guru da ya. Jada prem ya ta adeko, o bhi guru da ya. Jede netran de vach, atma bethi ya, o bhi guru da ya. Does that make sense? Everything is the guru. So I go, honestly man, we're not afraid of hell, because... We're not afraid of going there. And this comes from a Sakhi of, of an answer that a Bibi gives. That's a different Sakhi. She says the exact same thing. And when we said that, O Kabragya, O ne sannu puchya, ki fe tusi Jesus bare ki soch dea. O odi pavna helgi. Because who can say with that much dava, ki ne sannu ni ko shona, sannu narkanj pej do, svarkanj pej do, asi ye azad po jaya. Jithe marji chal jiye. Bro, that's what you guys have been given. You have no idea. It's so hard to articulate these things because you have to experience them. When you experience them, then you'll be like, final ki cheez ya, Rab ne tam minu paacha hi de de niya. Does that make sense? So, we're going to go over these books real quick. Yeah, go ahead. You, you read them. Chau pai khalsa so jo ninda tiaga. Khalsa is that person that lets go of gossiping. Like gossiping. Nindya is when you say bad things about one another. Just let it go. When you do nindya, you're act, in, in Bani it says that a nindak, when you do a uh, nindya of someone, just remember this. You're literally licking away their, their pop. You're taking their pop onto your own head. That's how Barney describes it. They say Nindak is so nice because a Nindak is taking away my sins. Thank you so much. My mom and dad don't even love me enough to, to do Nindak of me. Thank you, Nindak. And then in the end, they say Nindak dubbe. A Nindak will drown. Te matar jana. Haji. Khalsa so lada ho Khalsa is that person. What is a Khalsa? There's a difference between a Sikh and a Khalsa. Khalsa is one that gets in the front lines and goes, I want to fight. I want to fight for what's right. I want to fight for justice. Remember I was saying institution building? What is your version of getting all these horses together and these Shastras together? Systemic institution building. This is the generation that inspires the Sikh Renaissance. Everything you are doing is for your grandchildren. But for what? Not with each other. Not ki jake kandri sahar mariye tam odda marjiye. Build institutions that are going to help generations. Hanji. Khalsa so jo de vaidana. Khalsa is that person that goes and gives daan. Daan is um, uh, charity. Go out and give. You know, we don't give our this month at all. I've seen the pump, bro. We don't give, we don't give 10% at all. Give your 10%. To Gordware, non-profits. Stop thinking, oh, I don't even matta take with a dollar because the committee will eat it. You don't, you're not giving the dollar to the committee. It is our parampara. It is our mariada. It is our respect. When we see our guru, we say, what can I put at your feet? Maharaj, I'm putting this dollar. I'm putting this kill. I'm putting this dod. I'm putting these flowers. I'm putting something. You have to put something at the guru's jaran. And then you matta take where you're saying, my head is yours and everything is yours. Then we do parkarma. We walk around. Where are we saying then? You're the center of my universe. Ah, kya prem di kahani. And what if we turned it into, I don't go to the Gordwara because it bolsters committees that are corrupt. No, bro, go get darshan of your guru. <laughs> <laughs> and and come in the front and fight for what's right. Khalsa o jada more ho ke jange. Hanji. Khalsa so jo mare khana. Mare khana. Khana is um, khajana. Mare means to go and take it. Right? So they're not saying go on horseback and start robbing banks and things like that. They're saying Khalsa is that person that goes and fights with Dasa no the Akirt. Work hard to build wealth for the Panth. Work hard to attain the Shaktiyan that are in the world to bolster the Panth. Again, it's one of those. Whatever industry you are in, work hard to make the Khalsa sustainable. Don't get me wrong. Maharaj di kirpa drishti hove. You don't need to do anything. Let's go like this and everything will be done. But Maharaj inspires you. Maharaj has us speak these words in different avastas. Maharaj works through us. And everything you do from here on out will be Maharaj. You're just a tool. But you do it thus. Maharaj, make me a tool. I'd like to experience being your tool. I'd like to experience doing seva for this month. Hanji. 
Khalsa is that that kills all five. What are the five? Who are we killing? Hold on. Kaam, Krod, Lob, Mo, Hankar. Lust, anger, greed, attachment, and ego, right? And it's like, oh, but I can't kill them. You know, this sucks. Like, I'm a terrible sick. I fall into calm. I'm a terrible sick. Relax. But that's what a call size. It's a journey. Journey your way over there. All of these five are what make the world work. Because you have Krod, you can fight for what's right. Because you have calm, we're able to birth. Because you have lobe, you're able to earn money for the month. Because So learn to tame them in such a way that they work for you. How do you do that? Through Naam, Sahaj, Santok. You have to build a fortress of all of these qualities. And the Panj will stand outside the fortress trying to attack. And you're going to be like, yo, my fortress walls are too big. Stay outside. <laughs> right? That's how, that's how this game goes. So don't beat yourself up if you're falling. I see a lot of people go, nah, Makesta Anira, because I don't keep my hair because I keep falling into calm. Relax. It's doing those things that will build your fortress. That's your step towards the Guru. The Guru will handle you. Hanji. Hanji. Karm come in three ways. What you've done in your past life, what you've been given from your past life to bring into this life, and what you're earning in this life. Sinchit. Kiriyaman and, and uh, Pralabad. Those are the three types of karam. Uh, and this is written in our, our history as well. Bhai Daya Singh Ji explains this. One of the Panj Pyare, Guru Gobind Singh Ji explains this. So I'm not just making things up. And you have to go through your karam. It's tough. But Guru Gobind Singh Pacha, Guru Nanak Dev Ji Nek Bakshish Ki Tiya Apanate. What is that Bakshish? Ki these karam, you can burn them away. And how exactly do you burn them away? Kor Dukhyan. If you are someone that has gone and committed a million sins, you've gone and you've killed just an unagarnat amount of people. You've thrown away your entire janam. There's no one greater than you in the sense of just sinning and throwing things away and killing and, and just, you know, uh, you get the point. A big sinner. Mitant sagal. All of it can be erased. All of these karams can be erased. Simrant har naam. By doing Vaheguru Simran. You know how people are like, oh, where does it say? Say Vaheguru, Vaheguru. Simrant, which means to meditate. Har, which means God. Naam. Har naam, har da naam, Vaheguru. So meditate on Vaheguru. Sit down. Vaheguru, Vaheguru. How? Nanak. Nanak as in the reader. Jase. Exactly how. Pavak. Kast. Pasmang Karod. The same way that there is large hay stacks and each stack of hay or each like dandi inside of the hays is your sins and you light a match and you throw it on there. Saying Vaigru once is like lighting a karod amount of pop and burning them away. Khalsa Oa Jeda of the Karmanu Sade. Hanji. Khalsa So Joman Khalsa is that person that moves away their pride. They don't have pride in themselves. They have pride in their guru. Everything I've been telling you guys, the reason you have nirpata, the reason that you have no fear, it's not because you're like, I'm a Sikh. It's because you're like, my guru is amazing. Ma'avda koi manni. I can't do anything. Dude, I have to do ardas before I even speak. Because if I don't, I spend my time stuttering, brain farting, not knowing exactly what to say. Because I know Maharaj is going to say what they're going to say. Any seva that you do, it's like, Maharaj... You handle it. I don't know what to do. And Jibhovad Digalya, go in front of Maharaj and take a Hukumanama. The Hukumanama will guide you. Hanji. Khalsa sof jo an din jaga. Khalsa is that the an din jaga. The person that is awake night and day. How are, uh, awake how? What does that mean? Khalsa doesn't sleep. Khalsa ni sonda. No, it means being tiyar bar tiyar at all times. Dude, we don't even take our kripan off in the shower. Tiyar bar tiyar, always ready. We don't take it off when we're sleeping. Tiyar bar tiyar. Then, there's a deeper meaning to this as well. There's four types of avastas. Jagrat, swopan, sakopati, and samadhi. Jagrat is when you're awake. Swopan is when you're dreaming. Sakopati is when you're unconscious. And samadhi is when all becomes one. 
Kal says that person whose meditation is at a point where at all points they're in that Nam Simran of Maharaj. That topic's are too deep, so we'll just leave it at that. Hanji. Kalsa is that person, but Drisit is when Pad means someone else's. Drisit and the whole word together, say it again, I can't pronounce it. Pad Drisit. Yeah. What it means. Uh, is that you as a Khalsa don't look at other people's spouses. You don't look at their cars and their houses and go, damn, I wish I had that. Khalsa doesn't say that. Khalsa is content with what they have. You don't look at other people and become greedy. You don't look at other people's wives and start thinking about certain things, husbands and start thinking about certain, no. You look at someone's car, you get happy for them. You look at someone's business and you go, wow, Khalsa no idde maharaj tarakkiyan bakshan. That's the path now the Khalsa has, Hanji. Khalsa so naam rat laga. Khalsa is that person that attaches themselves to the naam. Their rat, their, their, um, it's like the wagon that is behind the horse during war. When they're fighting this, this battle of life, their uh, chariot is tied to naam. And so those are the values of the Khalsa that, that we have to put in ourselves. We're sitting out here and we're like, just donate. Just buy sick books for your children when you have them. Learn about sick yourself. Just please don't let this tharm die out in your family. Because it's the same philosophy that will give you so much courage that you want your children to know this. So keep it alive inside of yourself for those reasons. Even if you can't inspire the Renaissance, just inspire your family. Just kirtan suno, sakhiya suno, katha suno. Thank you for that. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Please donate and help spread Guruji's message. Link is in the description below. Vahe Guruji ka khalsa, Vahe Guruji ki fateh. Oh,